morning, everyone, and welcome to Scarva Street this Sunday morning as we come to bring our worship to God. A special welcome to the Reverend Rodney Moodney, who is our preacher this morning. Rodney, you're very welcome. We trust you'll feel at home with us here in Scarva Street. Friends, just one or two announcements before we begin our time in worship together. Uh, just to remind you that Christian Aid Week starts today. Envelopes are available for you. Um, please do feel free to contribute to Christian Aid Week and bring your envelopes back on a suitable Sunday for you. This year's focus is on women farmers in Malawi and also on children's schooling. Uh, there's been quite a, a difficult time for the people in Malawi over the last few months with uh, flooding and the washing away of their crops. They have um, pigeon pea seeds which they tend to plant which are very resilient but they were washed away and so part of our giving this year will allow them to buy some more of these seeds and look to get back uh, on course again for a harvest. So please do remember this in your giving. There's, uh, please do pick up a little leaflet with an envelope attached to it uh, and also there's there's a christian bucket in in the the porch if you wish to use that on this or, or a convenient sunday committee meets tomorrow night at 7 30 in the moor room and session are asked to meet after that meeting just for one item of business we have a session appointment to make uh, which is a yearly thing so for elders just to wait afterwards please Elders training is on Tuesday evening at 7.30 in the Irvine Hall. Our prayer meeting is on Wednesday at 7.30 in the Moor Room. And um, this uh, week we don't have mums and tots as it's election day on Thursday. Sunday school meets next Sunday morning at 10.30 in preparation for Children's Day. So please do remember that in your prayers also. We have our Sunday morning prayer meeting at 10.30 in the Moor Room. Uh, after worship next Sunday, there'll be tea and coffee, God willing, in the Irvine Hall. Uh, the PW ladies are reminded of their opportunity to meet in the Leisure Centre tomorrow evening at 6.30 if you're free. And just one final announcement, uh, Raymond Hetherington, our church officer, is retiring today and uh, we wish him well. We'll have opportunity next month just to acknowledge that uh, as we'll have a little presentation for Raymond. But just to let you know that Nigel Bell is taking over that role and so if you have property concerns, uh, you can give Raymond a break and you can contact Nigel. I think these are all of the announcements this morning. I'll invite Rodney to lead us in our worship today. Good morning. It is lovely to be with you here in Scarver Street. I'd like to thank the Reverend Colin Harris for allowing me into his pulpit. In Psalm 89, verse 1, we read, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever with my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. Let us stand and worship our faithful, loving God as we sing our first hymn, Light of the World.
us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather in this place today, we gather to worship you, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who loved us so much that you gave us your Son who stepped down into darkness for us. Lord, we praise your majestic holy name. Lord, as we humble ourselves before you this morning, Lord, we acknowledge that over the past week, we have not bowed the knee to you as we should. That instead of following you, we have chosen to go our own way, disobeying your holy word at times through word, thought, and deed. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us through the precious blood of Jesus. And Father, we pray today as we gather in this place that you will bless us. Bless us as we sing your praises, as we listen to your holy word. Lord, encourage each one as they need encouraged. Challenge and rebuke us as we need. And Lord, strengthen us as we go out into a new week of service to you. Lord, enable us to follow you so we can bring glory and honor to your name and bring joy and blessing to those around us as we faithfully serve you. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In our Bible reading today, I would like to read from the Old Testament, from Psalm 139, and then over to the New Testament to look. So first, reading from Psalm 139, from verse 13 to verse 18. Let us hear the word of the Lord. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am faithfully, faithfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. And then turning to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 15, reading from verse 8 to 10. That's Luke chapter 15, reading from verse Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Amen. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Now, I'm sure, like myself, you love animals. You love watching them, perhaps. Their behavior can be quite funny. Perhaps you have a favorite animal. Some people like dogs. Um, who likes dogs? You can put your hand up, anyone? Yep. Some dog lovers. What about cats? Anybody love cats? Yes. They're, to be honest, uh, my favorite animal is goats. I have a few pygmy goats at the manse, but cats and dogs aren't so bad either. But you know, we can learn so much from our animals. In fact, the Bible tells us we can learn so much from watching the animals around us. For example, the ant. Maybe you're not so fond of ants so small but the bible tells us we should look at to them and learn for example in proverbs in proverbs we're told to look at ants quite a lot but in verse six chapter six verse six we read go to the ant you sluggard consider its ways 
and be wise. The ants, so small, but apparently they're quite strong. I'm not sure how they tested this, but someone has found out that an ant can lift 50 times its own weight. Now that's amazing. That would possibly make me being able to lift a car with one hand. So ants are very strong, but thankfully very small. But something else an ant does so well, an ant works together with other ants. They don't work by themselves. They work together as a team. And what they can accomplish is so amazing. For example, you might not be able to see that so well on the screen, but this is an ant hill. I would perhaps call it an ant mountain. You can see the size of it perhaps compared to the person. It's huge. One person could not, one ant could not build that. But together they did. They built this beautiful, massive ant hill because ants work together. And that's how we're supposed to work too. That's what we're supposed to do. Each one of us, each one of you has skills, certain skills and abilities. You will find them as you grow up, as you go to school, and perhaps many of you have found them. And I'm sure you can do amazing things. But when you use your abilities together with others, you can do such amazing things, far better than what you can do by yourself. In church, we work together, and you work together using your gifts. And as you do, God can use you to do amazing things. We should be like the ants, not working by ourselves, but working together. Now, another creature, the bird. I'm sure you all love um, birds. I love birds. When I was growing up, we had lots of birds in our back garden in Avery's. And here's some of them. Isn't that beautiful? A little zebra finch, very small, but beautiful. Or a rosella, another beautiful bird, slightly larger. A cockatiel. Is anybody familiar with one of those? You ever seen one? Be careful. They have very sharp beaks, as I had to find uh, a few times. It took me a long time to learn, but beautiful. Or lovebirds. Absolutely beautiful, lovely variety in creation we see through the birds. But Jesus tells us we should look to them and learn from them. Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. What can we learn from the birds? Well, they have enough, don't they? They have all that they need. They use the abilities God has given them to find those worms, to find that seed. And they have enough. They have enough. And Jesus reminds us, you are more precious than a bird. So much more precious. God will also make sure you have everything that you need. Sometimes we want more than we need, don't we? We can be quite greedy. We can want more and more and more. God promises when you live for him, he will give you everything you need. Never forget that. Just look to the birds and remind yourself what Jesus has said. He will give you all that you need as you use what he has given you for him. Now, one last animal, and I'm sure you've all seen one of these probably on your way here today. That's the sheep. A little sheep where I am. There's lots of sheep uh, around the fields beautiful but sheep are quite amazing too and we forget how amazing they are apparently they can almost see directly behind them not quite but looking ahead they can see things um quite well about 300 degree degrees although they can't see in front of them sometimes they fail to see what's right before them maybe that's a bit like us as well at times apparently there's over a thousand different breeds that's amazing a thousand different types of sheep i always think of them as just little white cloud with little sticks coming out but apparently there's more to them than that they can recognize now I do not know who worked this out but apparently they can recognize over 50 different faces so I'm told but they can be smart that way but they also recognize voices they can recognize their master's voice and when he calls go to them and that's what Jesus said in scripture in John 10 27 my sheep listen to my voice. I know them 
and they follow me. They can distinguish, they can make out their master's voice and go to them. We are to be like good sheep. You are to listen carefully to your master's voice, the voice of Jesus. As you go to Sunday school, as you sit here in church, listen carefully to what God's word says. Listen and then follow. Do what he tells you. He will never steer you wrong. He loves you. He cares for you. So make sure you listen carefully. As you go to Sunday school, as you're, when you're here, when you go home and read the Bible yourself, listen to what your master says and follow him because he wants the best for you and he will lead you to what's best. So it's important that we're all good sheep, that we listen carefully and we follow. It's important that you also behave as a good ant. Work together, not against others, working together. And God can do amazing things and make sure you never forget the bird. God provides them with everything they need and you are so much more precious than a bird. Keep following him, doing what he asks and he will give you all that you need. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beautiful creation you have placed around us. We thank you for all these different creatures that show us something of your amazing power and your amazing love. And Lord, I pray that you will help us be like good ants, working together, not against each other, but working together for you. Help us to remember the birds, remembering and trusting in you because you will give us everything we need as we follow you and help us to follow you faithfully help us to listen to your word and help us to do it because you're a great and awesome god who loves us and cares for us we pray in jesus name amen now we're going to stand and sing our children's hymn one more step along the world
prayers of intercession today. I would like to pray first for the Cochrans. The Cochrans, as you know, are two of our global mission workers, two of the mission workers that you support through United Appeal each year and pray for as well. I'm sure there are workers in Portugal. They have been involved in church planting in Porto since 2008. Um, and recently this year, actually, local elders have been elected and a provisional pastor has been put in place to lead. Um, so James and Heather are at the minute in the middle of handing all responsibility over to local leaders. Um, so they need our prayers. Uh, they're also planning to come home on a sabbatical um, in a few months so God can continue to lead them and show them what they're to do. So we'll go to pray for the Cochrans. We'll also, of course, pray for the Reverend Kenny Hanna, your um, rural chaplain. Again, he's been working hard, I'm sure, over the past uh, few days, the Balmoral um, show. I'm sure he's always working hard, but we give thanks for that and pray that God will bring fruit from the seed that's been sown there. And of course, I'll also pray for your church here in Scarver Street, if that's okay. So let's come before the Lord and let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for the blessing of being able to bring our needs before you in prayer. We thank you that you allow us to come before you in and through the name of Christ, your son. So Lord, we come. And today, Lord, we come remembering the Cochrans, your faithful servants over in Porto, in Portugal. Lord, we thank you for the work you have enabled them to do over the years. We thank you for the local elders that have been ordained and installed. And Lord, we pray that you will bless them and use them as they reach out into the local community, as they organize different things for their church. Lord, bless them and guide them. Lord, we give you thanks for the interim pastor who has been placed. We pray you will help him as he leads. And we pray that you will direct them to the pastor of your choice, Lord, in the future. Lord, we pray that you will give strength, continued strength to the Cochrans at this time as they make sure all responsibilities are passed over to local believers. We pray that the right people will be found with the right gifts so they can work together for your kingdom in Porto. And Lord, I pray for Heather and James as they come home in sabbatical. Lord, I pray that you will give them the rest they need and give them the continued guidance they need as they seek to continue to serve you wherever you place them. Lord, we thank you for the Cochrans and we pray for their continued strength, strengthening and equipping as they serve you. Lord, we give you thanks for the Reverend Kenny Hanna. Also, we thank you for the opportunities he's had over the last few days in the Balmoral Show. Lord, we pray that you will take the seed that has been sown there and Lord, use it to produce much fruit for your kingdom. Lord, we pray that you will continue to direct the Reverend Hanna as he works with farmers and farming families. Lord, just lead him through your Holy Spirit to the places, to the people he needs to go to, those who need encouraging. Lord, direct him and continue to guide him as he seeks to reach out with your word to the local community. Lord, bless him and cause him to be a blessing to all those he meets. Lord, I pray for your people here in Scarva Street. Lord, I pray that you will continue to strengthen them and lead them as they serve you here in this community. Lord, help them as they reach out. Lord, direct their paths, equip them, and Lord, give them many opportunities so your love, your faithfulness can be spread, continue to be spread around this area. Lord, help them and lead them, we pray. Mighty God, I pray that you'll help each one of us to be faithful followers. Help us to continue to listen to your word and give us the desire and strength to walk therein. So all the glory and honor will go to your great and awesome name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we continue to worship the Lord as we stand and sing. Speak, O oh Lord.
I'm not sure about you. I don't know you, but I'm sure at times you're a little bit like me and you can lose things. Do you ever lose anything? I must admit, I am regularly losing my keys. I am, just yesterday I was waiting to, um, to, take, to go and collect my son from work. And of course, before I went, I couldn't find my keys. I searched everywhere. And as usual, my wife found them exactly where I had placed them. But we can lose things and it can be frustrating. But it's even worse when we find ourselves lost. When we get in the car, when we're going to somewhere we've never been before, we put on the sat nav, we head out. And instead of finding our destination, we can find ourselves in the middle of a road with grass growing up the middle. Or we find ourselves in a dead end. Again, that has happened to me. Thankfully, it didn't happen today. I always learned when I was working with CEF, when you were going somewhere new, go at least half an hour beforehand. But it's not nice when you find that you're lost. When you find yourself not in the place that you should be. A horrible feeling. Here in scripture, we find Jesus telling us a parable. That is a story with a meaning about something that has been lost. This is one of three, of course, the lost son, the lost sheep, and the lost coin. In this one, we find the lady. The lady had 10 silver coins, probably silver drachmas. Again, the drachma possibly was worth about a day's wages in those days. So they were precious, not something you would want to lose. And some say this coin may actually have been one of 10 coins that were given to the bride at marriage, a little bit like your wedding ring. Although these would have been worn, not in the finger, but around their head. Very precious, these coins. And in this parable, the coin represents people just as the other in the other parables. And it reminds us that each person is important to God. Each person is, is precious in his sight. You are precious in the sight of God. We are precious not because of the qualifications we may have, not because of the job you may have or what material possessions you have gathered around you over your life, but you are precious because you were made by a creator God. You were made, the Bible says, in his image. Genesis 1, 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The fingerprints of God are upon you, his creation. Something of God's image is in every one of us. We're reminded of that in Psalm 139. Fearfully and wonderfully made, you are. You have been. And because of that, you are so precious. Never, ever forget that. You are precious to God. This little coin was precious to this woman, it seems. Because one day she noticed it was missing. One day she noticed she had nine, but one had gone. Panic must have set in. You know what that's like, don't you? When you reach for your wallet or your purse and it's not there, or you open your wallet and you find your debit card or credit card isn't there. Again, that happened to me. I'm not always losing things, by the way. But the other day I was going to pay for my petrol and found my debit card was not there. A quick phone call to my wife sorted that out. But you know how that feels? A cold sweat gathers on your brow. Your heart perhaps starts beating a little quicker and you start to feel a little sickness at the pit of your stomach, a horrible sensation. The Bible tells us that although we are precious to God, we are by nature lost. We have lost that close relationship that we were made for. We are not where we should be before God. Due to the fall, the Bible tells us we have been separated from our holy creator God. 
the one who loves us so much and cares for us, by nature, we no longer enjoy all the blessings he has made for us. The Bible tells us, Isaiah 59 verse 2, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. Your holy, perfect God can have nothing to do with sin. And we all have sin in our lives by nature. So by nature, we are lost. Not where we should be. Not enjoying God's blessings day by day. In fact, we read in Romans 5, verse 9 and then 10, for if while we were God's enemies, you see, when you are lost, you are seen by God as an enemy at war with God. That's serious. That puts chills down our spine. We are left in a very serious position due to sin. By nature, we are considered lost. When this woman realized that she was lost, she started to search for it. And that would have been no easy task. Her house would have been quite dark. Apparently, there'd usually have just been one window, maybe less than two feet, feet in diameter, to light the place. Very hard to find something that was lost. The floor would not have been beautifully carpeted like the church here today. It wouldn't have had beautiful wood. It would have been mud and straw. So easy to lose something as small as a coin. It could have been right there in her reach and she wouldn't have been able to see it. But this coin was so precious to the lady, she decided she would search for it. She didn't say, well, I have nine, so I don't need that one. That one that was lost was so precious, she started to search for it. And we're told she did everything she could to find it. We're told she lit a lamp, possibly like this one, to look around the house. She started to sweep the floor to try to find, had it gone into a bit of mud, had it stuck in the mud, had it gone under some straw. And we're told she searched, she searched dil diligently looking for it, looking for that little glint of light revealing the place it had fallen. Again, apparently the fact that scripture here uses these three verbs, action words, light, sweep, search, is to emphasize she did everything possible to look for this lost coin because it was so precious to her. You are so precious to God. Thankfully, God did not wash his hands of us due to our sin. He wants you to be found. He wants you to know him and enjoy all his blessings now and forever. So he has done everything to search for us. He has done everything that's needed to bring you and me back to himself so we would be no longer be lost, but found. He has set us in the midst of his beautiful creation. Creation, although marred by the fall, still shouts out to us about the existence of a powerful creator, God. Indeed, Romans 1, Romans 1 verse 20 tells us, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. People are without excuse. Creation, that which around us clearly screams the existence of a creator God, leaves us without an excuse. He has put us in the midst of his wonderful creation. He has also given us his word, scripture, given through his prophets, finally written down so we can have it. And we have scripture today available in so many translations. You can have it on your phone for free. You can download it in any translation almost you can think of. Freely available. The powerful word of God, Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It is powerful. Through it, we can know him, who he is, who we are, and exactly what he expects of us. God has not left us in the dark, searching around in vain for meaning, for purpose. He has given us his word. So when we open it, so often we leave it closed, don't we? We 
leave it on the shelf. When we open it, when we read it, when we ask God to enlighten us through the Holy Spirit, he will. He will direct us. He has given us his word. And of course, he has given us his son. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. A verse that we know so well. So often we hear it, but it can lose its meaning. It's wonder for us. God loved you and me so much, even though we rebelled against him, he gave us his best. He gave us his only son, Jesus, who stepped down into darkness, suffering, dying on the cross for you and for me. Luke 19, verse 10 tells us, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He came to seek you and me. That's why he suffered on the cross. Such amazing love for you and for me. So the sin in your life, the sin that separates you from God, that causes you to be at war with God, can be ultimately dealt with, paid in full. Jesus did it all on the cross. What amazing love. How precious you are to God that he gave his son to die on the cross for you. And of course, the Bible tells us he sent his spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the world to convict people of their sins, to bring people to himself. John 16, verse 8. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Never doubt how precious you are to God. He has done everything, everything to bring people back to himself so they would no longer be lost, but so they would be found. 1 Timothy 2.4, God who wants all people to be saved and to come in to a knowledge of the truth. God wants all to be found those you work with during the week, those you live beside perhaps, those who live in this town and further afield, they are precious to God. God does not want them to remain lost. He wants them to be found. God wants all to be found. So what do we do about that? What do you do about that? first thing, you need to make sure that you have been found. You need to make sure that you have responded to God's amazing grace yourself. You need to make sure that you have bowed your knee to him, that you have sworn allegiance to him as your king, submitting your life to him as you confess your sins to him. Commit your life to him as you trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You must take that step yourself. God has done it all so you can be found, no longer lost. Make sure you have responded to him, accepting his gift of salvation as you submit and commit your life to him. And then, then it's important that you and I, we work together in the search the rescue for others who are still lost. Those who need help so they can be found. And different ways we can do that. You can give little leaflets, booklets, explaining the gospel. You can text some. I've left some of these in the vegetable table. The Reverend Colin Horace has left them for me. A little present from the North Coast. These are beautiful ones, The Road to Freedom, written by the right reverend. I think I've got that right, Ian McNee. Beautiful, simple presentation of the gospel that you can take, read yourself, and pass it on to someone else. Again, when I was working in CEF, we used to call them paper missionaries because God can use them to challenge someone's life. As they lift them, as they read them, God can work in their lives and bring them to himself. So by all means, take one or two of those and give them to someone else. God has placed upon your heart so they can read about how they can be found. Invite. Invite others to church. Invite your friends to church, those you work with, those you live amongst, 
why do you not invite them to church on a Sunday morning? So they can hear about the one true living God who loves them, who cares for them. Invite them. You can invite them to special events. Invite, invite them anytime to church where they can hear the wonderful story of God's love, how he cares for them. Invite. What about sharing the gospel yourself? You know, we can share so much, can't we? As we sit for a coffee, as we talk to others, we can talk, maybe you weren't talking about the Eurovision contest. Some will be probably for the week ahead. We talk about the weather. We talk about our football teams, don't we? What scores that we find easy to talk about those things. What are we talking about? What is, should be the most important thing in your life? The Lord Jesus Christ. Sharing with others simply what he has done in your life. We used to talk um, where I came from about one minute testimonies. Giving your testimony in one minute means you need to know it yourself. Very clearly what God has done for you. It's something you should think about. We could, you could learn how to do, give your testimony in one minute. But others need to hear. So share what God has done for you with those around you. Simply, in your own words, even after you've read something like this, making it clear to yourself, share it with someone else. And of course, pray. Pray for others that you perhaps know who are still not found. I remember working with a lady in Dublin, and she had been praying for one of her family members all of her life. And it wasn't until she was on her deathbed that this person she'd been praying for for years and years and years finally gave his life to the Lord and now he's working on the mission field. So never give up. Keep praying that the Holy Spirit will give you opportunities to share your faith. That God will work in the hearts of those perhaps you work with, you live amongst, giving you opportunities to talk and share and that the Holy Spirit will convict them and bring them to himself. Be praying for those that you know are still lost, not where God wants them to be. And of course, we can all support those who already are. Support those that are out there taking the good news to others. The likes of the Reverend Kenny Hanna, who is taking God's word, showing the love of God in how he behaves, how he acts, and sharing God's word. Pray for him. I think there's a little blog you can sign up to on the Presbyterian Church website. Sign up to it. Know what he's doing and then pray for him as he's sharing the message. Our global mission workers, they have little dispatch videos you can go to and look at on the Presbyterian website. You can look at their prayer letters as well. And there are many other local missionaries, perhaps, that you know. Get to know them more. Get their prayer letters so you can be praying for them as they go out showing God's love, proclaiming God's love, that through them, others will be found, supporting others as well, because people are so precious to God. God wants no one to be lost. He wants them to be found so they can know him now and forever. Therefore, we all need to be part of that search, that rescue effort. This lady, she searched, done everything she could, was found. The coin was found. Can you imagine the sense of relief that swept over her as she saw that little twinkle perhaps and then she went and picked it up, dusted it down and found yes, this was the coin. The coin that was lost was found and we're told in scripture there was a celebration. She got her neighbors together and she rejoiced. See when we respond to God's grace through repenting and trusting in Christ we are no longer lost, but we are found. Children of God, constantly in his presence, in and through Christ. No longer separated from him. No longer at war with him. Scripture tells us, Romans 5, 9 to 10. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more have been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? Reconciled. Peace reigns between us and God once again when we trust in Christ, no longer lost in that place where we shouldn't be outside of God's love and blessing. He brings us to himself, reconciled at peace with our God, our creator. 
That's an amazing reason to celebrate, isn't it? That's an amazing reason to rejoice as we think of what we have in Christ. What you have in Christ, no longer lost, but found one of his children for now and always. That should cause us to rejoice. That's part of why we come to church on a Sunday, so we can sing together, so we can praise his name, so we can celebrate what we are in Christ, no longer lost, but found. Rejoice. That should cause us to rejoice, as we will do in one minute. But remember, you are so precious to God. Never, ever forget that. Made in his image. Although by nature we are lost, God has done everything for us to be found. Everything. Make sure you have responded to his amazing grace and then get involved in the search, the rescuing. We all have different abilities, different gifts. We all need to remember those little ants. Working together with the gifts God has given us, we can do so much. Never think you're too small. Never think you're not good enough. In Christ, you are found and you can and you do have a part in that rescue, that search with the gifts God has given you so others can be found and others can rejoice in knowing God as their King, as their Lord and Saviour. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are amazed that you love us and care for us so much, that we are so precious in your sight, even though we have rebelled against you, we have sinned against you time and time again, you loved us so much, you gave us your only son to die for us. You paid the price for us on the cross in full. Lord, we just thank you. And Lord, we pray that you will help us once we have bowed our knee to you through Christ, Help us to be involved in reaching out to others with the gifts, the abilities you've given us. Lord, show us how we can help others find you and know the blessing that only you can give. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we stand and sing this beautiful hymn, And Can It Be?
And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you all, both now and forevermore.